Alrighty, we are back again. This is polynomial classification part two. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm um, going to be integrating the classifications we did so far by terms. So let's just start right with 2x uh, squared minus 4x plus 3. All right, that is a polynomial of one, two, three terms, and therefore it is classified as a, you got it, trinomial. Trinomial. Okay, now that's not all that we can do. We can also not just classify it by terms, which is what this is. We can also look at the exact same polynomial and classify it by what we call degree. So by degree. So the first thing we have to kind of understand is what the heck are you talking about by degree? I don't even know degree, like 42 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. What, what kind of degrees are we talking about here? Well, all right. So degrees in algebra are the words given to the exponents a general description. So instead of you know calling it an exponent, I can say that the the variable has a degree of two, or the term is a second degree uh, term, or a second degree polynomial, depending on what you're saying. So in order to talk about degrees, we do have to acknowledge what the degrees are of all of the terms in the polynomial. So let's just identify. We already I already know that's a two. What is this one? What what is the degree of that x? Well, we've been down this road already, haven't we? We know the degree is a 1. We just don't show it. Now, here's the fun one, 3. The, the degree of the variable, guys, that's what we're talking about. Not the degree of the coefficients or constants. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the variable. So what is the degree of the variable of the 3? And I know you're thinking there is no variable. Excellent. There is no variable, therefore its degree is zero. Remember that anything to the zero power is one, so that would really be the same as times one, and three times one is three. So you're back to what we already know, that anything to the zero power is one, so I can write that without changing any value. It is not zero. If this was zero, zero times three would be zero, and there would be no three. Very important kind of concept. However, it must be said, you really don't have to understand that to understand degrees, at least have a basic intuition of them. It's okay. So you notice that they have uh, degrees now, a two, a one, and a, and a zero. And if you're going to classify this by degree, you go to its highest degree. Now, we in the algebra community usually order our polynomials by degree. We put the largest degree in the front. It's considered uh, appropriate. It's considered classy when you do it that way. It's sophisticated, possibly. Uh, if your degrees are all over the place, it's a little disorganized and tacky. So, you know, try to organize your, your, your variables by degree. So this one, 2x squared minus 4x plus 3, is a second degree polynomial second degree. That's a fancy way of saying its biggest exponent is a 2. It's a second degree polynomial. There's more, but let's just go with that. So tell me, what is the degree of this one? I'm going to give it to you out of order. I'm not going to, I'm going to be tacky. Yes, I am. All right, there you are. First of all, just, I'm sorry. I know I asked you one thing. Now I'm going to throw something else. Um, I, I just wanted to change it up, make it a little bit more fun. How do we classify this one? Like, how, What would you call this as far as by terms? How many terms does it have? That's right. It has four terms. And what do we call a four-term polynomial? We call it a polynomial. That's right. We don't have a special word for it. So this is a 
four-term polynomial. It's always kind of nice to tell the person how many terms your polynomial has. This is a four-term polynomial. What is its highest degree? Looking, looking, looking. Well, there it is. The highest number that's an exponent is a four. Let's look at it a little bit more carefully because this is so easy you don't want to get confused by it. There's a three, there's a two, there's a four, and there's a nothing. So you know, the nothing is not going to be bigger than something, so we don't have to worry about the constants by themselves. Uh, your highest degree is this one. So this is called, that's all you need to know, this one's called a fourth degree polynomial. And I'm just going to say poly. Fourth degree polynomial. Let me give you another one. Okay, that's a little slow for me. Let me go speed to the eraser. Speed racer, not speed eraser. Speed racer, go, 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 speed racer, go. Really should have background music, don't you think? I'm going to have to start integrating some background music. Let's try something else. How about 2x to the 5th minus 8 x cubed. Okay, what kind of a polynomial is this by terms? How many terms? One, two. A two-termed polynomial does have a special word for it. It's a binomial. Binomials have two terms, just like a bicycle has two wheels. And so this is a binomial, but I want to know, if you know, what would its classification be based on its highest degree? Its highest degree, we are in order, is a 5. So it's a 5th degree binomial. Oh, we're putting it all together. Yes, we are. And i got to add one more thing to you. Now... I've told you first degree, you know, we haven't looked at any first degrees. Second degree, third, fourth, and fifth. I'm going to stop there because those are the ones that have names. And these are degree, 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 degree. Now, the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth degree polynomials have special names. So what I want to do is break it down for you and show you each one and tell you what their names are. You should maybe make a table. I'm not making a table because I want it to be big, but I think you should organize your data as best you can. So let me go to a new page because it'll be prettier. And let's start with your first degree. All right. First degree, Polly, let me give you an example of a first degree. Uh, okay, this will be easy. This is a first degree polynomial because its highest degree is a 1. Remember, this could be a, a 0. So what you learn to do quickly is you kind of discount the constants, though the ones that don't have variables, you don't have to worry about, at least for when you're classifying them. So in the case of how this looked like before I added a, a variable is, get the way you decide uh, what its degree is. You first of all, take a look at it, identify what all the exponents are, and you find the biggest one. So I only have one variable, so it's up to that one and the variable has a one. It's a first degree poly. Now, a first degree is called a, are you ready for it? I am, if I could get a pen that works, linear. Now, I want you to notice the word line in the word linear. These are our functions that graph when their y equals mx plus b. They graph as a straight line. They are linear. And so anything with its highest degree being 1, meaning you don't really see an exponent when you look at it, is considered a linear polynomial. All right, let's sub in 
change things up again. Here we go for the next one. So what if it was um, a second? We've got to change that too, don't I? Okay, second degree. Well, I could easily just change this or problem that I gave you uh, and make that a two, right? I could I could sauce it up. I could make that a Y, and I could add a, a 5. It won't matter just because it's a trinomial versus a binomial. It's We're talking about degrees. We're talking about the highest degree. That one's a 2. This one's a 1, and don't have to worry about the constant for this activity. So this is a second degree trinomial in this case. And what's the fancy word for a second degree trinomial? The fancy word is... You're going to love this. I know you're thinking, well, what, what do I think it would be called? You'll never guess. It's called a quadratic. A quadratic, in this case, this is a quadratic trinomial. It's a second degree trinomial, and it is a quadratic. So you'll notice the red second degree is called a quadratic. Let's go to the next one. Don't try to... Don't really try to rationalize it. It probably will confuse you. <laughs> All right. So we move on to what's the next number? We're doing a third degree. A third degree. Well, let me change my problem a little bit. Just let's have a fresh problem. This one's so I'm getting bored. Third degree means my highest degree should be a three. So let me do... How about y cubed minus 2y? It doesn't matter what I do, pretty much as long as the highest exponent is a 3, it's a third degree. And so, what do we call third degree polys? A third degree poly is called a, think about it, what do you think? Uh, something with a power to the third power is something, this is y what? Cubed, good, so they're called cubic. That makes sense. In this case, I have a cubic binomial because I have two terms, and the highest degree is a 3. Okay, on to the next. So what if its highest degree is a 4? Then what? Let us find out. What about the fourth degrees? Well... Let me add some fun stuff to the one that I already have. Change it up a little bit. Let's make it 2y squared minus 2y cubed plus, I better get a something to the fourth power, right? 5, uh, it doesn't matter, it could be x to the fourth. So there it is. That's my fourth degree poly. It's a how many terms? It's three terms, so it's a trinomial, so it's a fourth degree trinomial. What do we call something that's fourth degree? Well, okay, we kind of blew the quad right on the square, which was weird because we think quad, you know, quad runner is a four wheel, kind of like a motorcycle type of a fun thing out there. So uh, you know, we, we we blew the, the what we think in fours, like a, we have a cult. Quads are always meant for. So now, what happened? Math usually makes sense. This is a little strange. Um, it's actually called a quartic. Now, you do see quart. Now, I'm thinking quarter, quarter, right? That's, that's four quarters make a dollar. So, there's a way to remember it, but Absolutely everybody has a tendency to get a little confused with quadratic and quartic. Fourth degree polys are called quartic polynomials. In this case, we have a quartic trinomial. Let's do the last one. The last one will be a fifth degree poly. And I'm going to make it nice and simple. I love simple. Simple seems to confuse people and I love when something simple isn't confusing. So fifth degree, here we go. I want a monomial. I'm going to create a monomial, which means one term, right? So how can I create a one term 
with it, it being a fifth degree. You think of yours, I'll think of mine, and maybe I get lucky and I, we come up with the same one. Did you do it? I mean, that's about as simple as I can come up with. So x to the fifth is a monomial, and I it's a fifth degree monomial, and we would call it a quintic monomial or a quintic polyomial. And this is when I think it's a little weird to call a one-term poly because to me poly means many and one term is pretty much the opposite of many in my brain. So anyway, it is what it is. This is a quintic monomial. Now we have degrees one through five. I left somebody out and it's not six. Go the other way. I left out a zero degree. Now I did that on, on purpose because I wanted to leave the, the last for the best. So a zero degree, how do, how, 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 okay, we just did a fifth degree, right? We wrote x to the fifth and that was easy and that was a quintic monomial. How, how are we supposed to write a zero degree? Well, we could go the easy way, right? Change that to a, a zero. Okay, that's always the easy way out. So that's a zero degree. And then what is that called? That is called a constant. Now, a constant is almost always, I've never seen it anything but a monomial. Because you'd wind up combining them all together. Because they'd be like terms, they would be just numbers. And I know I'm throwing you off a little bit, and I think the zero degree is the most confusing, but it's an easy one to remember. So let me help you out with what all the constants look like. The good news is I've been calling them constants since school started. The number five, the number eight, the number one half, the number point one two five. Make it a negative five so you can see the negatives are included. All of these numbers have one thing in common, and that's that they don't have a variable showing. And the reason they don't have variables showing is because all the variables would be to the zero power, if I showed them. That's supposed to be a zero. They'd all have variables, but they'd have to be to the zero power because they would all technically have to turn into ones that you'd wind up timesing, which would not change anything. So, you know, in math, we don't do stuff that, that winds up having to do this to make it back to what it was before we did it. It makes sense. And so what you realize is a zero degree polynomial is called a constant, and those are reserved for all of the numbers that are by themselves without variables. So what's an example of a zero degree constant? Five negative 5, negative 52, negative 52.8, all of those would be considered constants. Any number you can dream of will be a constant, a zero degree. That, my dears, is the end of that. You've got everything you need now to classify a polynomial, not only by terms, but by degrees. Put them together. Make yourself an organized piece of uh, note for uh, class so that I can check over, make sure you have all the data you need. I do know that this video went 18, almost 19 minutes. That's okay. I have extended time on YouTube because I am a frequent flyer. I will see you in class. Peace out.